Hey puppy people, it's Cindy and I am back for another day of toys. It's all about the toys. I am telling you, <laughs> believe me when I tell you this, I have been working, training dogs professionally for over 30 years. I've been in the animal industry for, oh my God, 40 years now. It's crazy. I'm so old, but I've seen things. I've seen things, man. And having my own family, having my own kids, I know how busy you are and I know how difficult it is to entertain your dog, especially when you have a young, active dog that was bred to do a do job, not just sit on the couch. They get in trouble when they get bored. So I am here to give you some fun, easy ways to keep your dog occupied and out of trouble. I hear all the things, my dog does this, my dog rips apart this, my dog digs in the trash, my dog counter surfs, blah, 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 blah. The list goes on. And why does your dog do all of that? They're bored. They're looking for something to engage their brain. So let's play with our dogs. And play is super motivating for your dog. They've done so much research lately showing that play actually lights up a dog's brain more than eating does. So yes, food is important. Yes, making them work for everything. All of those life rewards. But keep in mind, play is right at the top. So let's make them... Let's take advantage of it. And I mean, that's why you got a dog in the first place, honestly, right? Is to play and have fun with them. So that's what I'm here for. So the toy that we're going to talk about today is, I've got a couple here, is our tug toys. So tug is kind of a controversial thing, believe it or not. A lot of trainers will say, oh, don't ever play tug of war with your dog. Um, and that's not really true. Tug can be really good. Tug can be a great way for them to um, get rid of some of their frustration, some of their stress. It's very physical and it's a great way to bond with your dog as well, especially with rescue dogs you have or any new dog in your house. It's a great way to bond. It's a great way for them to alleviate stress. It's very physical. It's mental, but like everything else, we have to do it correctly. And it's easy for the tug game to get out of control. So as you're playing with your dog, please keep in mind that if they start to get too excited, game over. Game over. I always say we want to focus on the calm, not the crazy. Because crazy doesn't need any encouragement. So really watch if your dog starts to, as we say, cross that threshold where they're too amped up, game over, put it away, stops. So tug is great, but we don't want to overstimulate and overstress the dogs, okay? And I'm talking to a lot of my guys out there. I don't know why guys do this, but they love wrestling with the dogs and they love just amping them up. It's not good because then your dog is amped up and then he's going to start um, getting uh, a little too intense. He's going to start jumping on you. He may start nipping, pulling at your clothes, depending on the dog, depending on the breed, depending on the situation. And then you get mad because, oh, the dog is jumping all over me. But you just taught him to do that. So as you're playing tug with the dog, you want to keep it low key. If they start to get too excited, game over. And I'm not talking about, you know, waiting till they're at a 10 and then stopping the game. You want to stop when they're like four, five, no, no more than five at this, this ampiness level. If that's a word, I'm making ampiness a word now. If they get too excited, game over. Okay? We don't want to encourage that because what happens, and again, I've seen it a million times, the guys play with them rough like this, so what the dog learns is to play rough. Well, not everybody wants to play rough with your dog, so make sure you keep it um, safe and sane. 
safe and sane tug work. And I also like to um, add a different layer to that. I'll even, you know, make them say please and thank you for it. I'll have them do a sit and then put it on command, tug or play. If they start to get too amped up or if you're just done, you don't have any more time, game over. Put it on cue, game over, stop, whatever you want to say, have them do another sit and then the toy goes away. And that's one thing I really want to talk to you about these toys is again, I know every video I say it, except for a couple of them, these are not chew toys, okay? Not all toys are the same. There are solo play toys and there are interactive toys. Tug is an interactive game where you are playing with your dog. When you are done, you pick up the toy and it goes away and then you replace it with a chew toy, your Nyla bone, your classic Kong, something that your dog can sit and chew on and not destroy. Because not only will they destroy this and then you've just wasted all that money, but they will pick off pieces of it and ingest it can cause a nasty obstruction that may require surgery. So keep your dog out of the emergency room. Now, toys like this, you can see, is there a picture of it? Um, where they're playing with it, you have one end. I like this because you can hold it, and then the dog has the ball in the other end. Now, if you have a super strong dog, maybe a pit bull or something, uh, a Rottweiler, a Dobie, something that has a lot of strength. <laughs> Even some of these little Frenchies can be really strong and pull you over. So you pick a toy that's easy for you where you're always going to be successful and the dog isn't always just grabbing it away from you. And then, yeah, it turns into a game of um, keep away, right? So a couple other different designs here, like this rope toy, and I go into a lot of people's homes, and there's a lot of these ropey toys like this. Again, not a chew toy, because they will rip it apart. They will fray the, en the engines, the ends, and can ingest it. Now, this is fine to be left alone with some dogs, especially your little puppies, but most dogs will start ripping this apart, okay? Rope toys are not chew toys. And that's the other complaint I hear from people all the time. Well, I bought my dog all these toys and he doesn't like any of them. Again, this wasn't designed for your dog to sit and chew on like the Nyla Bone or the other hard chew toys or the Classic Kong. This was designed as an interactive toy. You throw it. The dog brings it back, or you play tug of war. Okay, so a lot of these can be used interchangeably as fetch toys as well as tug of war toys, just depending on your dog and you and what games you like to play. But I sound like a broken record here. Okay, so bear with me because I have learned that the first half a dozen times I say things, people don't even hear me. <laughs> so I'm going to repeat myself on purpose not a chew toy. These are not meant for your dog to sit and do solo play with because they will rip them apart. And then the other thing, sound like a broken record, is don't let them get too amped up when you're playing with them. Okay. Now that's the challenge with tug is it is easy for some dogs, especially your terriers, to really get escalated when they're playing with these. When you're playing fetch with them, it's not as easy for them to escalate. Okay. So keep in mind with your tug. I like to say the rules of tug are they have to say please. They have to do a sit first, put it on cue, and then definite game over when you're done playing with them. Or if it escalates too much, game over. And then the tug toy goes away and you replace it with an appropriate um, solo play chew toy. Okay, so tug is fine. You just have to keep a few rules in mind. So um, with that, thank you for hanging out with me. Till next time, go play with your dog. Safe and sane play, but go play. <laughs>